So um, these donations will go to mothers who are in need. Um, the steak dinner and the Methodist men will be meeting will be on Wednesday at 5.30. Uh, steak dinner is hard to resist, guys, so if you haven't got your order in and how you want it cooked, you need to let Ronnie know. Um, the youth are meeting um, at Magnet Cove Methodist tonight at 5 o'clock, and next Sunday is the chili cook-off. So I think all these people that are missing are home practicing on their chili because they want to win, so uh, we'll show them. So um, thanks to everybody that helped out with Chocolate Fest, and I think that's everything I have on my list. Does anyone have anything they want to add? It's not this week, but next uh, Wednesday, which will be the 26th, will be our Ash Wednesday service. It'll be here in the fellowship, or in the, uh, right here at 5.30. So uh, everyone uh, that's able to come to that, it's a, it's a neat little service that we do every year. And uh, it prepares us as we begin getting into the Lent season, which is coming up starting the 1st of March. So uh, everyone that can come to that is welcome to attend. And also, I'm doing something different this year. Every Tuesday night at 5.30, there will be a short prayer service here in the chapel. So uh, anyone that would like to be a part of that, please come and join us. It will be uh, different styles of prayer. Every, every Tuesday night will be a different style of prayer. So if you're able to be here during the Lent season, it will be each Tuesday at 5.30 during the Lent season, starting with uh, the first Tuesday in March. So uh, anyone can join us for that as well. Okay, anybody else got an announcement? All right, then if you, if you will, please stand uh, for our call to worship. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. We believe in God the Father, infinite in wisdom, power and love, whose mercy is over all his works, and whose will is ever directed to his children's good. We believe in Jesus Christ, Son of God and Son of Man, the gift of the Father's unfailing grace, the ground of our hope, and the promise of our deliverance from sin and death. We believe in the Holy Spirit, as the divine presence in our lives, whereby we are kept in perpetual remembrance of the truth of Christ and find strength and help in time of need. We believe that this faith should manifest itself in the service of love as set forth in the example of our blessed Lord to the end that the kingdom of God may come upon the earth. Amen.
hear these words of assurance that today come from Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Our loving God has said, I have set before you today life, prosperity, death, and adversity. Choose life. Brothers and sisters, in the name of God, you all are forgiven. Now choose life and turn your heads towards God. Amen. And now it's time for our children's moments.
Let us worship now with our tithes and offering. If the ushers will come forward. <coughs> Let us go together in the spirit of prayer. Our most precious and heavenly Father, we come to you to say thank you. Thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for every blessing that you give us and that you continue to give us. We ask now that you will take these blessings that we're returning to you. Use them for your service to your kingdom. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Roger Jones. Of course, our prayer list here is continuing to grow, so take a moment and look at it over and uh, pray for those that are already on our prayer list. Let's continue to remember our country. Continue to remember the United Methodist Church and our leaders of our churches. There's going to be major decisions upcoming that, that uh, will 
most likely affect the whole church. So uh, be in prayer for that as annual comp as our general conference is coming in May. So uh, just be in prayer for a general conference in May for for our denomination. Continue to yes, ma'am. All of those that, are, that have the flu. Yes, the flu continues to be a big uh, a big deal, and, and it seems like it's growing every day. I continue to remember those that are dealing with the flu and those that are dealing with this uh, virus that seems to be spreading, and all those that are in China specifically that are losing their lives, their families. Curse for those that are dealing with that, trying to find a way to uh, counteract it. <laughs> yes, we need prayer for everybody and for everything every day, that's for sure. This, uh, remember our country and those that are the leaders of our country as well. Others don't believe it. <laughs> if not, then let us go together to the Lord in prayer. Our most precious and heavenly Father, this morning we come to you to take a moment to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you, Lord, that we were able to come together to be in your house this morning to worship you. Father, we thank you for forgiveness of sins, and we thank you, Lord, for the privileges that we Christians have that we can come to you in prayer no matter what our situation is, no matter where we're at in life, that you hear our prayers and that you answer them in your own way and in your own time. Thank you, Father, for your healing touch. Thank you, Lord, for your strength in when, the, when we need it most. And thank you, Lord, for the peace that comes upon us sometimes that just lets us know that you're with us and that you're among us and that you have us in your arms. Thank you for being our rock and our salvation. We come to you now with many concerns on our hearts. There are so many that need your prayers, that need your blessing upon their lives, that need your healing, that need your comfort. We pray for those who are being lifted to you right now, silently. Lord, you know their means better than we do. Meet them where they're at. We pray that you will be with those who were lifted up this morning. Lord, give them comfort and strength. Be with those who are mourning the losses of family members, of loved ones, of friends. Lord, give them peace in their hearts. Give them comfort in their time of mourning. And give them strength to continue on every day. We pray that you will be with our country, Lord. We pray that you will lift up our leaders. Let them lead in a way that will be pleasing unto you. Lord, we pray for the divisiveness that has come between us. Not only as a country, but as a world. And not only as a Christian denomination, but as members of your church. We pray that you will fill that divisiveness with your Holy Spirit and with your love. Bring us closer to one another. Guide our hearts, guide our spirits, guide our minds. Lead us, O oh Lord. We pray that you will be with those who are the leaders of our denomination as they are preparing to make decisions that will be sometimes difficult. We pray that you will guide their hearts. Lead them in a way that will be the best for not only our church, but for your eternal life and your gratefulness and for all among us. We pray that we will find a way, Lord, that you will give us hope, that you will give us strength, not only for today, but tomorrow and for the weeks and months to come. Lead us. We thank you every day for your presence in our lives. 
for all that you are and for all that you do. And we come together now with one voice as we say the prayer that you gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Y'all did such a good job with this last week. I'm going to let y'all stay seated again this week. So We sing together now our hymn of invitation. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. It's on page 349 on the screen. We'll say through this one twice. that Isaiah had for us 
And then we looked at Paul, how it related together and how Paul asked us to come together as one as we work towards those promises. Then we spent the last couple of weeks talking about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and the various promises that were there and how wonderful those promises are, but how sometimes we have to work for them a little bit. We look now at another promise that God gives us. And it kind of seems ominous at first if you look at this promise. In Deuteronomy, we have an important piece of the Israelite history. We're looking at them right before they were coming into the promised land. And they were preparing to enter that land. But God gives them here a commandment first. He says, Obey the Lord your God. Observe His commandments. Turn to the Lord with all of your heart and all of your soul. Now, if you happen to be an Israelite and you listen to this and you hear this, that shouldn't be too difficult to do, right? Because God, after all, has brought you out of the desert. You've wandered there for several years. He's always given you what you needed. And He has told you that just if you will listen to what He's asking of you, you get to inherit all this territory, this land that is going to be wonderful and everything will be provided for you. So you wouldn't think that it would be too difficult to do that. Because in reality, they owe their freedom to God. And he says that he wants them to just follow him and listen to his commands. Not too difficult of a thing to do. The, uh, the temptation, though, <coughs> was always present. Temptation was all around them. Everywhere they looked, there were these other countries, these other peoples, and all these other peoples, well, they had tons and tons of guys that they prayed to. They prayed for prosperity to one. They prayed for good crops to another one. They prayed for their harvest to be good. They prayed to another God of the moon and God of the sun and all this kind of stuff, the God of the seas. So they had multiple gods that they prayed to. And in fact, some of them even worshipped idols. So for the people of Israel, there was a lot of temptation all around them. There was temptation right there in front of them to just step away from God and say, you know what, these people seem to have it pretty good. Let's go be a part of what they're doing. Or these people over here seem to have it pretty good. Let's go do what they're doing. I don't think any of you guys would uh, probably go out and rob a bank with a handgun and uh, take all the money and run, right? No, I don't think any of you guys would do that. If you would, I need to have a talk with you after church and just hang around for a minute. We, we need to have some serious conversation. But what about if a bank were to say, drop an extra dollar fifty in your account for some crazy reason? They, they forgot something and there was an extra buck fifty laying around in your account. Now that seems like a small amount, right? It's not that big of a deal. Oh, it's a big bank. But it was a clerical error that was in your favor. I, uh, I'll tell you a story about myself, something that I think was pretty silly, but I did it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell on myself a little bit. A while back, I went into Walmart, and it was kind of chilly that day, so I had my hoodie on. And I went over there to the deli counter, and I bought one of those $4 meal things or whatever it is, the snack packs. And uh, I grabbed a couple of those little ranch dressing things, you know, those things that are right there beside it, and I uh, put, put them in my hoodie, and I just kept on walking over there to the thing where I checked out. Well, I checked out, I walked out the door, got all the way to my truck, and then I realized that these two ranch dressing packets were in my uh, hoodie. Well, now, that's about 50 cents, maybe 75. I'm not really sure how much those things cost, but they're not a whole lot. And I could have thought to myself, you know what, Walmart's a big company, and after all, they ought to provide us with some dipping sauces for our chicken strips anyway, since we're paying for them. But I kept thinking about it for a few seconds, and I said, you know what, I'm marching myself right back in there, and I'm going to pay that 50 cents for those two little ranch cups that I have in my pocket, because if I don't, it will plague me for weeks to come that I stole from Walmart. And not to mention, they take your picture, so if they happen to find out that it was me that did that, they might ban me from going in there because I stole two rich cups. So. But anyway, there is a constant temptation around us today. We're always tempted by things. There's tons of temptations right in front of us. But there's also God imploring us, 
telling us, listen to His commands. Obey what He has to say. Hear His words. As we get into our scripture reading, it says that God is telling them, I've set prosperity before you. I've put everything that you could possibly ever want right in front of you. He said, I've given you life. I've given you prosperity. But there's also adversity sitting out there too. There's also adversity sitting out there too. But he says, if you'll just obey me, worship me, follow my commands, you'll get to be numerous. You'll get to be prosperous. You'll grow. I will take care of you. It'll be not an easy life, but it will be a good life, a healthy life. But then he also puts a warning in there. He says, but if you fall astray, there's always a but somewhere around there. If, you're here, if you hear that everything's going to be wonderful, there's always some but in there at some point. He says, but if you follow these other gods, if you go astray, then you will perish. You won't live long in this land that I've given you. What a request that he's given us there. What an interesting beginning he has given us. Seems pretty simple when you first read it, right? Obey God. Well, how's that difficult? Listen to my commands and then you get to prosper. But then you start thinking about it. There were so many things that could lead them astray around them. There were other cultures that were living life differently, and they seemed to have it pretty well. There were other armies that were all around them that they could be worried about that could come in and destroy them. There were people that were living in terrible lives and sinfulness. There were countries where you could get just anything you wanted right there in front of you. It wasn't too difficult to find temptation. So that's why God put it out there like, it did, like He did to them. He said, He implored them, in fact. He said, listen to what I'm telling you and follow me. Now, there's not a whole lot of golden calves left out there these days. And for the most part, Christianity has kind of spread out to where most people just believe in one God for the, for the most part. So you don't see a lot of people worshiping the sun God or worshiping the moon god, or worshiping the ocean gods anymore. But there are other temptations that are in front of us all the time, aren't there? There are other idols that could lead us astray. There are other things that could pull us away from God. There's money, there's promotions, there's cars, there's houses, there's people turning around and saying, well, just follow me, come with me, everything will be great. Just come along for this ride with me this day, everything will work out well. There's all kinds of things. Even the internet. What a wonderful thing it is. You can Google anything you want to. You can find all kinds of good stuff on there. But also it's a temptation. Because there's so much bad stuff on there too that you could look up. Seems like every single technology that we create has a wonderful side to it. And it has a not so wonderful side to it. Right? So all around us, there remains temptations. But we get the same message too. Follow God and all of your needs will be met. Now hear that word because it's important. He said needs in that. He didn't say wants. He didn't say that we'd have everything in the world that we possibly wanted, but he did say that all of your needs would be met. Then God goes even further in his message. He says, choose life so that your descendants may live well as well. So that they will have length in their days like your ancestors did before you. That's a great promise. Choose God and life will be okay. You will live well. You will prosper. Everything that you need will be met. It's almost like God has this giant big old carrot that he's dangling in front of everybody and he's saying, look, it's right here. All you've got to do is grab the thing. And he's not making it hard either. He's saying, listen to me. Obey my commands that I've given you. And love me. So then we take a look at our Matthew scripture. We look a little bit before the area that we're actually talking about today. <clears throat> and we see that Jesus is talking to his disciples and he says, Have no fear. Have no fear. Nothing that is covered up 
won't at some point be uncovered. There's no hiding it. It's eventually going to come out. It's kind of like a toddler who tries to do artwork over in the corner somewhere where nobody's going to see it, right? In the smallest part of the darkest part of the house is where they do all their scribbling on the walls and stuff. Well, eventually someone's going to clean that up and they're going to find it. Everything that is covered will be uncovered. It will no longer be a secret. Nothing hidden will stay hidden for very long. See, Jesus' ministry was, going, was growing more prosperous at this time, and it was spreading pretty far. And they were doing pretty well as his followers. And his disciples were starting to learn to not be afraid of what was going on. And then Jesus says something interesting. He says, What I tell you in darkness, bring it forward into the light. What I whisper to you, I want you to holler it out on the rooftops. I look at that verse and I think of it as saying, what we do in private, do in public as well. Be the person that you are in your home out in public as well. Be the same person wherever you are. You know, uh, if anybody watches The Bachelor or The Bachelorette, there's always one or two people on the show that when they're with whoever it is that they're vying for their attention, everything's wonderful, right? It's all great, it's good, it's wonderful. But then in private, when they're with all the other girls or all the other guys or whatever, they're not such good people. They're not so easy to get along with. And eventually it all comes out, doesn't it? Someone eventually says, you know what, this is what that person is doing, and you can either like it or not. Now sometimes it works out where that person still gets chosen, they still get a rose, and everything continues, and everybody's mad at them. But that's just the way it happens sometimes. But Jesus is saying... Everything that's private is going to come out eventually. It's always going to happen like that. And then he gets a little bit farther. He says, do not fear those that can kill you with the sword. Do not fear those that can kill you with the sword because they can't touch your heart. They can't touch your soul. No physical illness that you have no death that you can possibly have on this earth can do anything to you as long as you've got your heart right. And then he says, don't forget how you came to know me. And then he says, as we get into our scripture for today, don't forget that when a sparrow falls to the ground, your heavenly Father knows about it. This is where the promises come in here. We've had one promise, now we're going to have one from Jesus too. Don't forget that when a sparrow falls to the ground, your, fe your heavenly Father knows it. And sparrows are two for a penny. Think about that for just a minute. In the original text, it used the word farthing. That's the very smallest monetary unit that existed at that time. And you can get two sparrows for that farthing. Jesus says these birds are essentially worthless. But God knows when they fall to the ground. And God cares for them. And then he says, so you can imagine how much greater your worth is than that of a bird. And then it goes even farther. It says, all the hairs on your head are counted. Think about that when you start thinking about promises. Now, for some of us, there's not as many hairs as there used to be, so it's not quite as big of a deal as it used to be. But for the most part, think about, no, God knows how many hairs are on our head. Then Jesus ends with a statement that takes us all the way back to our Deuteronomy text today. He says, the one who acknowledges me, I will acknowledge. And the one that denies me, I will deny before the Father. So here, what an amazing life you can have if you will just listen to God's words, if you will just follow His commandments, if you will just hear what Jesus is asking us to do and if you will make sure that you spread his message every chance that you get. Obey his commands. Work for peace and righteousness. And enjoy the benefits of knowing that life isn't always going to be easy, but that God has every hair on your head counted and that we are way more important than a sparrow. But God knows when a sparrow falls. God will never abandon us. And we can know that our forever home 
is with our Heavenly Father. So remember this as we close out this series. Stand on God's promises. Our Creator, our Father, our Rock, our Salvation. His promises are never given up. His promises are always with us. And those will last for eternity. Because God keeps His promises. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our most precious and heavenly Father, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you that you keep your promises. Thank you for being our rock and our salvation. We ask that you will remind us every time we start to stumble, every time we face temptation, that your love is there for us and your promises ring true. Thank you for all that you are and for all that you do. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We close today with page 593. It's one of my favorite songs. Let us stand together and sing.
famous chili cook-off, so everybody bring their best chili recipes. And of course, this week is the steak dinner for those that volunteered in the men's meeting. Let us go together in the Lord in prayer as we close. Father, we thank you for your presence in our lives every day. We thank you that you call us. We ask, Lord, that we will hear that call and that we will follow you. Lead us, Lord. Guide our hearts. Guide our spirits and guide our minds as we leave this place to be your church in the world. For it's in your precious name we pray. Amen.